Okay, so, hello, hello. Um, I don't know how this happened. This is very weird. The Ricky Gervais Show, Season 3, Episode 13, The Year. I don't know how I got to the last episode so fast, yet so slowly. It took me over a year to watch all of these because I didn't do it weekly, so it took a little longer. But... I just 2023 just flew by by the way it just boom, right before your eyes and I'm snapping too much but one more <laughs> just for good luck um it just I don't know this year just came and went ridiculously fast so it feels like I started this just a couple months ago but nope I just checked because I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what's going on? So it sucks that this is the last one. What? I don't know how I time things too. I just, the same week I watched the last episode of the seventh season of Taskmaster. So I always, I, I don't know, timing just kind of finds me that way. But um crazy it sucks that it's ending i'm excited about the last one because i imagine if it's the last one it's a good one um but it just kind of sucks that it's ending but but but, but i plan on watching uh, the xfms and stuff so i know there's so much more carl content out there to to listen to not exactly watch but to witness experience <laughs> because these men are experiences these these just sitting what here oh see this is hard listening to them just have stupid conversations is one of the best experiences of my life silly enough as it is i just enjoy it so much they are so freaking entertaining so anyway uh yeah i gotta shut up now let's go <laughs> in a word you hear on it go on no i'm just saying you know when you look at it like that over the year yeah a lot of stuff has gone on. That's... What stuck out for you? If you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? I don't know what year they're talking about. <sighs> I don't know if I should look it up, but I'll just... I'll, whatever. Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> right. Just because, you know, it's... Uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So it was just I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. I uh, put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why um, would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool he down. It's a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea, and. Uh, I saw Planned like out. This is not <laughs> better. Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer, and there's an insect that is see through, but with legs. And um, just sort of running off with a crumb. What? Into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, we got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> they were going, biscuits, biscuits over here! But I can't, I can't, I can't, <laughs> like I say, it was amazing because it was they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet. Not that far. They're, but, but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird that that happened. And that's, what, that's what's <laughs> nice, isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the, na you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods, we can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, okay. but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up and see this see-through thing. You do. Oh, I was just biscuit. thinking that. Uh, <laughs> that's that's where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of uh, anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to to learn more stuff about weird stuff. That's. But I don't there. know what you've learned. You've learned that uh, a creature which you can't even identify. You name. don't know, right? You don't know what it is. Right? Um, <laughs> Look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that. What is that? How is that useful? Just because everything is is changing. But not it's not all knowledge is useful. Okay, just just a little FYI there. But useful um, is that? I see your point. How Ricky. is that useful? I just because everything point. is is changing. 
but it's not useful. It's not useful to you, and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was, but Carl or where thinks, it happened, or but, why it happened. But Rick, I'm Carl thinks cell. that that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it. They, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being uh, yeah. taking the starch and anything. the flour. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But they're eating biscuit, <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. Violent? Now, over time, you know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are now. What evidence have you got that they're more violent? Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky. They come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now. They want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's... Time, time makes you more intelligent. Well, does it? No, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> What? It was on the internet, right? And somebody had, had linked up a cockroach to uh, <laughs> some. I can't even bother explaining it, but but because uh, you can. But that's what I'm saying. Everything everything's moving on. Yeah, but but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man. It's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so old. God. Oh, God. <laughs> hello, PlayStation Three. Yeah, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay, Here's that gives me an idea cockroach. of the time frame. Sure. Out. All Christ. I'm saying is, I do watch a lot of insects and stuff, <laughs> and you never see them wasting time. They're always doing something, and ants carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it, and it goes somewhere and comes back again. You think, does it know what it's doing? <laughs> but at least it's trying. <laughs> what you? Now, if there was a what is it doing though? What is that ant doing? Work. It's doing. It's building a house. But or what? What's the point? It's everything it does is pointless. How can you say Not that? It's it. pointless. I'll it's tell just... you what, if, if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world and they went, right, let's look at the human race, and, well, they'd look at the ants first and they'd go, Why? Oh, they've got their hands full. They're carrying big stuff. They try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them, really. <laughs> they could do that with, between three of them, but they don't. They're all grafting hard. Then they go, right, hit the human button. They hit the human button, they watch the humans. The amount of people who are just sat about doing now, Lily Allen in London at 2 a.m. So what? <laughs> what are we doing? I agree with you, but what are so you what? doing? You see, the ant analogy, joking aside, I think there you hit on the fact that Lily Allen. life is about working for what you get. And I'm right behind that. I am right behind that. Mm. I think that's... Uh, I, 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 I think that's absolutely true. That's what I meant. What's dangerous is... What I meant. A boiling camp. kettle to an ant. At the end of the day, right... Yeah, but that's that's evil, isn't it? What? You know, I, I don't... I, I, I mean, you, you sometimes make out as if I'm an evil man. We had an ant problem mm. in the garden. Suzanne said, we've got to get rid of these. Mm. And I said, well, it's a bit out of order. They are outside. And she yeah. said, yeah, but there's getting a lot of them. She went and popped the kettle on. Mm. I said, I can't handle this. I went in, right? <laughs> what, you didn't want to see the ants, man? That's sweet, you know, they're there. Yeah, they might be causing a problem, but... I don't want to see this this mess. Now the thing is, she went out. She poured the hot water on it. I left it a few minutes. I went out. I had a cup of tea. I thought it's a waste of electrical. Oh, kills me. Yeah. <laughs> so I took my cup of tea out there, and I'm sat there. And then I just saw one come back from wherever it had been. One ant. It was on vacation. He looked devastated. <laughs> because. Wow. I've never been able to read devastation on an ant. That that is that is a high level talent right there to read the emotions of an ant. Impressive.
That that had been away. As far as that was concerned, it had been out to get a leaf or whatever. <laughs> Came back, devastation. <laughs> and it's, it's that what... That, that's, that's the thing that he summed up death for me, that. The, the ants that are dead, they didn't know anything. Suddenly they were there, next minute, load of water, dead. It's the people who are still living in life that are the saddest, aren't they, after death? Yeah. And that summed it up. What do you think? That you ant came... would have been better off being there when it happened. How could you tell the ant was... What do you think? So you saw him... I mean, they run around in circles anyway, don't they? But this was just kind of going, what's going on? And what did, it, did it slow down when it got nearer the nest? Did it drop the leaf and then you see it run the last few inches? It, it just kind of got close and it was like it, a double take almost. <laughs> <laughs> like it got near the owl, and then it was like, hang on a minute, this can't be it, because no one's around. And then it walked on, and they went, no, it is the owl. And it went back, and it, it just sort of stopped for a minute. Oh. Oh. And that, that for me, <laughs> that's the sort of thoughts. Things that you can look at as a human uh, yeah. and appreciate it and understand it yeah. and go, yeah, that's true, that is like life. Instead of, oh, am I awake? Am I asleep or what? No. But you might as well be asleep, because you're doing nothing else. <laughs> I was in the supermarket recently. Okay. Um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms. Yeah. And uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and I was weird, because the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage. So it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. So I'm trying to open this thing and, and this guy who works there, sort of this middle-aged guy who works there, he's, you, yeah, you have to, um, you have to take that to the uh, checkout. Right. So you can't open that yourself. And uh, so I just left it. I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take these to the counter. Because you never know, it's like if you get served by a, by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing. Particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> <laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, you're gonna fill them up with war and throw them at students. <laughs> <laughs> and um but what? It, anyway, the, um you're gonna fill it up with war and throw it at students. Oh and um <laughs> but it, anyway the reason I mentioned this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh was it a uh, two pack. A two pack of Yeah, what was it condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one, get one free? Isn't that romantic? Yeah. So that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort how of do buy you, each other as many that? presents. As oh, so, sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was that was a hell of a... She went, oh, I remember, when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, right. no, she your presents. No, she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course prizes. she didn't. That's what that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time oh. goes on... No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, isn't it, over, no, but over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't... If if you're if you always oh my god dude have you ever seen it's it's more of a sibling feud than anything but I absolutely I I get so tired of when Christmas time comes around and all it's always the same songs and the same movies and the same everything and people post their house decorations it's all the same every year the snowmen the Santa the elves and I just ugh. not my thing I don't like it but one thing I really like is when people start I, I this I don't. People started sharing this, like, I guess years ago, and every time it gets bigger and bigger and better. Um, again, mostly sibling feuds, but the way they wrap their siblings' presents, and sometimes it's just like a gift card this big for something really lame or really dumb, but they'll wrap it up like a bicycle or just make something huge out of it so you have no idea what it is. <laughs> Or, you know, there's this whole thing where wrapping one thing to look like something else, so this would be a talented person, but wrapping like a bicycle to look like a vacuum or something like that, and it's just so fun, I love those. <laughs> That's how you surprise people. I imagine Suzanne was surprised with the condoms, but I mean... My point was, the surprise doesn't always have to be good. It's just the fun to figure out what it is. Usually it's something... I've seen people put, like, just socks in an Xbox box. And, oh my god, you got me an Xbox! And you open it as socks. I mean, I don't know. It's like a game kind of thing. <laughs> thing good. It's like the Sorry, free... What? Yeah, but don't... 
If if you're if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men. What did they get the second year for the little David Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like oh, I've, I've, I've sort How of made it hard it? work for myself there. Right. I've got to get I've got to get him something better than that now. More gold. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next year. Getting the gold. It's like how you you know how like people make a big thing out of you know having it away for the first time, and they go, oh, "I'm going to do that tonight." Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything Happy done by away. planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote. That's an amazing quote. <laughs> That's a shirt. And they go, oh, "I'm going to do that." So wait, yeah, okay, I'm I'm putting this together. I never heard that like that before. All right, all right. Tonight, not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> That's a quote. Amazing. Motivational That's an amazing quote. Hell. Yeah. That'll be up there with uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. <coughs> Wait, that was oh, it. I wanted to hear more about that. Down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> Damn it. I thought that, that was going somewhere. That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also oh, think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but... Hmm. Well, let's, let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. Okay, let's no, I have. I read a bit in the news about people <coughs> being injured while trying to cut open avocados. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. If it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. Okay, coconut? <laughs> coconut, yes. Coconuts are hard. <laughs> Literally. They are um, just... I've, I've tried to bust them open when I was a lot younger, and those are a pain in the butt, all right? Got it. But an avocado... Is soft if it's ripe if, if you can't cut it open easy you don't want to eat it you can't chew it i mean so okay coconuts i get them those are those are not cool <laughs> i almost lost an eye and a finger with one of those <laughs> the amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the not joys they give yeah it's the same reason i never bought a pair of dr martin boots too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them. You All the, yeah, I mean, I, I, since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because oh. you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. Watched a programme about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the backing up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat? just someone I've been sort of working with. Do you want a mate of yours? He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're going to have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. That same means... rule with women. That's I don't even point. normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're going to have something that's, new... That's, that's it. it. That is an interesting point because it's very common to hear the twin fantasy. But... I, I actually completely agree with Carl. If you're going to have two, why have a copy-paste? Interesting. Ah, okay, okay. Make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? <coughs> it's exactly the same model. No. My theory That's about reading different. old news is wrong. <laughs> it's less bad when you know it's <laughs> Oh, my God. Just, ah, dude. It's hard to come across somebody you can completely agree with in one second, and then they open their mouth two seconds more, and you're like, no, you're an idiot. It's, it's amazing, but Carl has that power. Jesus. Old. There was a story <sighs> sorry, about sorry. reading old news is right. Because it's exactly the same model. Yeah, yeah, we got that. 
My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. There was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news, though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what, what I mean is if, if someone... Stick says the video it, on of uh, last week's news. I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but but then it's still news. If you, News is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you That's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the, what, key, the key with news is the word new. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's, it is. Just, it's just information, but they tell you at 10 o'clock at night. It's like, yeah. what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, because you couldn't have, because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. Yeah, we can't call it news, though, because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying oh. is, is okay. that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want to bring my tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now, say if you're away on holiday and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now, because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But yeah, but according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you. Uh, there was an earthquake. When was it? Yesterday. Phew. That's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two. You only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, "You got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense." No, but the world uh, but you're is... Not, you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you when they told you. Yeah, but it, it is everyone else's emotions <laughs> that, that make it worse, I think. It's weird. It's weird because I, I can understand both point of views. Obviously, it depends on the news or the olds. But I can understand... Not agree with... <laughs> But I can understand both sides of this, okay? So, I'm conflicted. Again, depends what the piece of information is. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a... I don't uh, like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful it might to be know important it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it... Like I've said... Hiya! It can be anything, as long as we know. It can be a chicken noise. Like, but no. as long as you know <laughs> that's chicken noise. Freak people out. <laughs> no, but it sort of makes... Like the ice cream truck song or something? You Jesus. smile, but you'd, you'd go, oh, let's get well, out of You're the cycling way. along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken <laughs> behind you. <laughs> and you scared. smile because <laughs> you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something clucking in my way. <laughs> that's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just pop that in brackets. <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. Did we? <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <laughs> because it probably won't happen until 2020. 12 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's <laughs> old. It doesn't, she knows she's going to die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. Uh, sure. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. Right. You will be dead when this happens. Don't be worrying about it. Went to bed around midnight. Susanna and I decided to sleep tops and tails because it made me get a bit more room. My dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roald Dahl book. 
No, it's just it's just uh, you know you think anything you can sort of trim anything, can't you? And it normally works. No. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off. I don't know what how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nose. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets stranger. It's so right? strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must Sorry. be to sort a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So it's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, man alive. It's like... Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats wow. with better bedding arrangements. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. You live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road. The old woman... <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. You live in a nursery rhyme, dude. That was great. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road, yeah. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, yeah. Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> this is like not a real place. It's like fucking Narnia. It's a children's TV program. Unbelievable. Oh, oh God. Oh, just all of a man on this broken mattress trying to find the golden ticket. <laughs> Cutting great conversations. So, uh, what's the big thing of this year? What's the big thing so far? And you'll go, oh, yeah, that was the year that... Uh, I haven't really been following what's going on because of other, other, like, personal Well, yeah, issues. what's the big... OK, what's the it's big thing? boiler. My boiler's playing up still. I'm sick of it. Your what? <laughs> Your boiler. Your boiler? The boiler that eats the water up and stuff. But it doesn't. You know what I'd do in that situation? I'd instantly get a repairman out to sort Done it out. that. Done that twice. It was 80 quid. For him just to say, yeah, uh, it looks like you need a new one. Why don't you get a new one then? Call out. Because you, then you wonder, are you meant to believe him or is he out to sort of. Well, he's the expert. Out? Yeah, but is he? It's well, like you're know. meant to get a second opinion, aren't you? Like, so that was the first Wasting time then. Money. So what was the second time? Who came out the second time? Same fella. And what did he say? Well, I thought you were going to get a second opinion. Yeah, and also. I the company and, and they just sent him again because it. Well, call think, a different what company. The, what was, it, no, what no. was his second opinion? <laughs> he quit. <laughs> I undercharged you, it's 150. No, because they, so they must look in the book and sort of go, oh, you know, Harry, Harry went round there or whatever. And uh, and they must think, well, he went there last time, so he knows the situation. Yeah. And got the same fella again. Well, so well and got the same opinion, same, I assume. Same answer, yeah. yeah. So so what's his advice? Um, he just said, you know, there, there are people out there who will touch it if you pay the right money. Well, OK, so you're going to get an expert in who does this thing and sorts it out, so... Well, no, I, I called up my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He always knows He's someone who can sort, sort stuff out. And he said, uh, oh, one of your cousins is a, is a boiler man. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming round, but I've never met them. And it turns out that that person, because, like, the whole family, you know, I, I'm not into sort of keeping in touch with people. Sure. I haven't spoke to my brother for, like, I don't know, 12 years and <laughs> sister about 15 years and that. So sister. the idea of this cousin... I forgot he had a sister. That's crazy. It's weird how that works. I could not imagine. I don't know if it's worldwide or what, but at least in Argentina, my mom's generation, I, I'm, I'm bad with the generation names. I don't know what starts when, who's a millennial, who's a boomer, who's an X, who's a Z, who's an Y. I don't know. But my mom's generation, 60 something, um, very, very common in Argentina. All the siblings are completely estranged. Completely, they fought over something really stupid 40 years ago and they do not speak. They know nothing about each other. I have so many, ex everybody I know of that age always has a brother or sister that they do not speak to. My mom and, and her sister, nothing, nada. They kind of sort of speak every once in a while about, like, you know, lawyer issues, about inheritance or whatever, but that's 
it. There is absolutely no bond or nothing. Then just, I, I know a lot of people, okay, <laughs> that have the same situation. All the parents just, I don't know what the hell happened in that generation, but it was like a thing to not care about your sibling and just a lot of them are in different parts of the world or it's very weird. I have two older brothers. I work with them. I get to see them all the time. We have family dinners. We celebrate birthdays and Christmases and I, I can't imagine a life without them. I fought with them each, you know, it's happened, spent months mad at them or something, but we always find a way to fix it. I cannot imagine my life without my siblings. So just to hear people that go for like 12 years without speaking to them, it's just so weird. For example, my uncle, my dad's brother, nobody knows if he's alive, if he's dead, where he lives. Nobody knows nothing because, again, they fought. Also, very, very stupid stuff. Like when you go down to it, why do you not talk to your brother? Why haven't you spoken to them in 40 years? Most of the time, they don't even remember. <laughs> like, what? So, I don't know. That's crazy to me, dude. Very, very strange. And it's very strange. There's like a lot of celebrities that. Like, it always trips me out. I, I was, I used to be a huge fan of Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz, the brothers, the MMA, all that. And um, they have, like, a lot of, they had, back when they used to do promos that were good, like in Strike Force and that, they did a lot of promos and stuff, and they do, I don't know if documentaries, but a lot of info about them. And they show you their childhood and this and that, and they were always together, and they were very close. And, and then just, like, out of the blue, they show you a picture, and they have a sister. And it's like they never mention her. They're always freaking together, but they never mention the sister. Again, there's no info on her. You don't know if she's dead, alive. It's weird. What is that? <laughs> Jesus. They have sister about 15 years and that. So it's crazy. the dude. idea of this cousin, who have, I, I, I mean, I, he might as well not have said he's my cousin because I'm not going to know him anyway. I mean, it might have, that last fella, Harry, might as well be related. <laughs> so, so they're going to turn up, and now it turns out that because they haven't seen the rest of the family, they're going to like use this as a reunion. Oh, what? So they're, they're all going to come round? Oh, wow. They're all coming round. I love how they're all him. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate, I hate family things anyway. So they're going to come round and just look at you? Well, yeah, apart from the one who's fixing it, he'll be fixing it, and the others will just be sat around, sort of going, so, how have you been? And it's like, well, where do you start? Who are you? <laughs> I haven't I'm seen... I'm, seriously, I mean, they are strangers. <laughs> when they buzz, I, I could be letting anyone in. <laughs> <laughs> they buzz the door. See, OK, so, that's what happened to me with my cousins. I have cousins kind of places. I know none of them because parents are estranged from their parents, so, again... I don't know where they, they never took any, they, all of them are older than my family and my siblings. So they never took interest in trying to find us or, you know, talk to us or care about us. So yeah, I don't know them. If I walk down the street, I, I don't even know if I'd recognize them. No clue. It's weird. It's weird. So you're going to entertain them all in your in your flat? Well, I, said, I said to me dad oh. that I might just say that I've got to go to a meeting, let them in, and then shoot off. And all it's going to do is dig up problems, isn't it? If my cousin was Einstein, very nice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's if going to add extra If your cousin was Einstein, then you that's really are an underachiever. <laughs> no, but do you know what? If he was, I'd know about it. I don't reckon you would know about it. I, I don't reckon your family would be that impressed with Einstein. They would have stayed in touch. He was they? always the weird one with the scruffy hair and his tongue out. Yeah. I remember our early ambition was to actually be educational as well as hopefully entertaining, and, and I feel perhaps at times we've perhaps slightly shortchanged listeners yeah. in terms of what they're learning. Well, they're not learning anything because also, um, even as uh, you know, compared to Carl, we we are educated, mm. but we're guessing a lot of the stuff, and he flummoxes us. But, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it was fun trying to be pompous and professorial enough just to just to fight Carl's ignorance. I think we've learned more new words from Carl than we've learned anything else. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of the made up words, perhaps more than ever before. Mm. <laughs> and also some of the most abstract um, conversations I think we've ever had. I mean, Carl's 
sure. As he gets older, it becomes more and more he, um, arrogant and confident. He said a new one to me the other day. Um, there was a problem downloading, and uh, he said um, they've added to the fuckerage. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Which is good. That yeah. is awesome. <laughs> no, I reckon uh, the stuff we know is enough now, and all we tend to do mm. is uh, find problems. All the mystery is still in the world. The mind-body no, problem. No, we know not. What a brick. Mm. We're done. Mm. How to save the world. Yeah, but we know, are we? We know it's dying. We don't know how to fix it. Not yet, we don't. Turn your lights off. But then we didn't. You turn yours off. Let's <laughs> get sick of it. Leaflets through the door all the time. Turn your eating off. Turn the lights off. Living like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love the grumpy little animation of it. They're fantastic. Mm. The little discussions he has with himself. Oh, I can't wait till he's old. That's going to be amazing, us three. When we're about 75, 80 years, he's fucking moaning. Oh, we're in a, we're in a little home. Together, I just suck. <laughs> no, don't end. Oh, Carl, do you remember when you were 73? Um, do I fuck? Tell us the TikTok I need to do again. Oh, what a fucking useless bunch of cunts. <laughs>
I feel wonderful. <laughs> so thank you, whoever. And this was a suggestion by a lot of people, by the way. But all those people that suggested this, thank you. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. Loved it through and through. Very fun. Very entertaining. This kind of started my, like, Carl Pilkington journey properly with the Idiot Abroad and everything. Just wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy Mandy. So thank you. You guys are awesome, by the way. You guys are wonderful. I appreciate all of you. You guys are just... Oh, I'm so happy I get to do this and I just I, I love it I love doing this and I love just the support and all of it and all of you and I read comments I don't always get to answer them because there's a lot of them and it takes a lot of time but I do read almost all of them I just kind of forget to respond or, or let you know that I read them but um just awesome you guys are just awesome that's it. Like, <laughs> I need a better. See, I need to go to a desert island with a dictionary to, you know, better my vocabulary. It needs to happen. But for now, awesome is all I have. <laughs> and amazing. <laughs> all right, guys, I am off. I could use a snack. Why not? See if there's any clear bugs in my windowsill. So, toodles, thank you so much for everything. I am off to discover new things.